We've taken Mapping Tonal Harmony Pro to a whole new level, to the point where we feel it's necessary to create a bunch of content so that you guys can get the most out of Mapping Tonal Harmony Pro version 8. And yes, the new version will be a completely free update for version 7 users. Also, all the add-ons you have purchased while using version 7 will work in version 8. So let's check out some of the, the new things in uh, version 8. So one of the things you're going to notice right away is a brand new interface. And all the interactivity and user experience has been greatly improved. And we've redesigned the toolbar and we've also implemented resizable panels. Also new is completely enhanced audio and sound. We've also refined all the chord voicings in our catalog that uses AI musicians to accurately reflect the various styles and genres that you can explore in our app. Um, we also have customizable instrument sounds including upgraded keyboard, guitar, and bass and drum samples as well. We think you guys really uh, like that. It sounds awesome. Also, new features for our guitar player friends. Um, this is going to allow all guitar players to seamlessly interact with mapping Tonal Harmony Pro. Uh, you can use the fretboard and chord diagram options to learn all of these scales and chords on your guitar. We've also improved the uh, visual experience while using mapping Tonal Harmony Pro. We have three fully customizable map themes and we've enhanced uh, the real-time graphics. With these new features, you can basically uh, fully personalize and customize your experience with Mapping Tonal Harmony Pro. There is also a new help menu and uh, tutorials. Uh, there's a thorough and integrated help menu that explains all the features available in this new version. You have instant access to a library of comprehensive video tutorials on how to use Mapping Tonal Harmony Pro, uh, harmonic analysis, tonal harmony, and a bunch of other awesome stuff as well. All right, so here we started the app for the first time, and right off the bat, you're going to see something that a lot of you guys have been asking for, and that's contextual help pop-ups. This one here says tap anywhere on the split line to start resizing uh, the split views. So basically if I tap anywhere here, I can make the bottom screen as large or as small as I need it to be while still interacting with the map or the chart. If I resize all the way up, I have a full screen view of my map now. And I have a new contextual pop-up on the top left-hand corner of the screen explaining to me what this button over here does. Tap on this button to re-split the main view back into the top and bottom panel. So I merely hit that button and I go back to where I started, right? And if I go the other way, I get the same prompt if I maximize the chart to fill up the whole screen. Tap on this button to go back to the re-split view. All right, so let me explain how the app works. First, there's always a song loaded. It could be a jazz standard, a, a section from a Beethoven sonata, or just a simple cadence. Every song is always fully analyzed. That's the way Mapping Tonal Harmony stores a progression. Unlike other apps that just store uh, chord symbols, Mapping Tonal Harmony stores songs functionally. So it knows a lot about the progression and therefore can create interesting voicings better backing tracks, upper structures, target notes, reharmonizations, and a lot more. This offers a much more in-depth and detailed insight of what's actually going on in the harmony. Also, mapping tonal harmony has information on different styles, so it knows how to interpret the harmony based on the style of music that you've set the song to. Now, the current song is shown on the staff with several layers of analysis, which you can customize depending on your needs. It is also shown on an interactive harmony map where you can see and study the entire harmonic progression at one glance. So the map and the staff are showing two different perspectives of the same exact song. This is Afternoon in Paris loaded in the chart and the map. As you can see, the map is only showing the chords present in Afternoon in Paris. Let's play it. So right off the bat, the play along sounds great. Let me give you the first tip. I like to resize the panels so that the third line of the score is barely showing. That way, 
when the app scrolls up, I've already seen what's coming. is changed to the solo section and the accompaniment becomes more elaborate. On the last head, the accompaniment will go back to a more subdued groove, telling you it's time to play the last head. The play along is set to repeat three times at the moment. To change this setting, we can open the play along panel here. The info pop-ups will probably get in the way of the demo, so I'm going to turn them off by tapping on this I button right here. You can switch them back on whenever you want to have them pop up again at any time. Let's change the repeat form to four times, and let's increase the tempo to 226. So as you can hear, the players have changed the way that they're playing the song. They're going to adapt the style, accompaniment, and swing according to the tempo. Let's change it to 120. Close enough. Ah, there. Now, it's a medium slow swing. What if we set it back to 173? And the groove has changed yet again. So far, the piano player has been Duke. But let's load some other player. You can access all the player settings and the different players available using the players menu here. There are plenty of useful parameters to tweak the way a player performs, but I will show them to you on another tutorial. For now, let's see how Duke was creating his voicings. Duke plays left hand voicings and bass with tensions. He always makes sure the guide tones are present creating a very consistent sound. Tap on change to open the players catalog. Now here are the players that can play jazz. If you're working on another style, the players list will change completely. These players know how to play a nice jazz voicing. You probably wouldn't want Ludwig or, or Wolfgang to play Afternoon in Paris. Let's look at Bill. Bill likes upper structures and full voicings. He always plays all guide tones. Tensions are given a high priority. We'll load him up and then press play. Still sounds great. Bill uses more range and notes than Duke, creating a very different sound for the same exact song. Try different players to see which one fits your needs. This ability to choose different players is essential because some players will be a better fit than others for different songs. Let me show you what I mean, but first, I'm going to import the add-ons I've purchased on my iPhone with Mapping Tonal Harmony Pro version 7. So just tap on the add-ons button and then on the restore purchases button. Once the App Store has verified that I've already purchased the add-ons, the app will show you an OK button. You can now rebuild the song catalog to make sure all songs show up correctly. Cool. I have all of the add-ons active. By default, the app just shows the song as a standard lead sheet, but this file contains lots of cool information inside. If we change the staff preset, we can view the same song in many different ways. Let's try this full analysis option. There, now you can see a complete analysis of the song 
with chord scales, arrows and brackets, and Roman numerals. This is what makes mapping tonal harmony different than any other play along or music theory app out there. Mapping tonal harmony knows music theory. It stores and processes information in a musical manner. If you want to add guitar diagrams, just choose a preset that includes them. There you go. You can see all those layers I was referring to. Okay, so let's load Equinox. This is a good song to show you how different players and grooves can give you a completely different take on the same exact song. If we choose Duke, and play, you can hear the backing track is following the harmony, and Duke is playing left hand voicings, making sure he includes the guide tones before considering adding tensions to the chords. That's Duke's style of comping. The groove is set to play a standard jazz groove, so the bass player and the drummer adjust their style to it. Now, let's load McCoy and change the groove to a modern jazz style. As you can probably hear, McCoy is using the Dorian scale to create cool chordal voicings on top of the minor 7th chords. And the bass player is also considering the chord chord scale pairing to create interesting bass line patterns. A totally different take on Equinox. Trying different players and styles to practice improvisation with different bands is essential. It's going to improve your ability to hear harmonic progressions in different contexts and help you to develop different types of swing. You can also change the instrument sounds if you want. Let me load Desafinado for example and change the groove to Bosa. So now, I could load Duke and play. He's playing a piano, but I can change it to a guitar sound, even if it's Duke playing the voicings. Players and instruments are independent, so now I can have Duke playing a guitar. Of course, guitar players will match the range better for a guitar sound. If I choose Bill, for example, using a guitar sound, it will probably sound out of range because he likes using a wider range for the piano. One thing you can try is adjusting the range. Now it plays more in range or more consistent with what a guitar or guitar player might do. Be aware that these voicings might be impossible to play on the guitar. To make sure you have guitar friendly voicings, choose a guitar player like Joe. You can adjust levels in the mixer, maybe more reverb. Here's a cool feature for piano and guitar players. Let's say you're interested in learning the voicings McCoy was using in Equinox. I will load Equinox back and McCoy as the player. The best way to investigate voicings in a song is to tap on the chords in the chart and see them on a keyboard. So let's open the panels menu. 
load staff on the bottom. This will automatically load the voicings keyboard on top. Now tap on any chord in the chart and it will show you the voicing. The cool thing is, is that you can browse all of the voicings McCoy knows for this C sharp minor 7 Dorian with these buttons here. I mean, that's a lot of voicings for just this one chord. Remember, these are voicings that assume there's a bass player in the band. So the bass is playing this purple note here. So consider adding the bass note if you want to practice any of these voicings on the piano. Now if you're a guitar player, you can load the fretboard. Now this panel works slightly different than the voicings keyboard panel. When you tap on a chord in the chart, the current player is what you're hearing. Now, we cannot guarantee that the voicing is possible on a guitar, so the fretboard will show a voicing that is similar and playable. Now, if you use the left-right buttons, you can browse the actual guitar voicings available and hear them. As you can see, this is a great tool to learn voicings on piano or guitar. Remember, these voicings are created using both the chord and the scale. So these are voicings for a C sharp minor Dorian, as it's shown here. Other pairings will give you different voicings. This is very important when you're comping because some tensions might be available that are often not included in the song charts. Alright, so we've barely scratched the surface, but now you have a better idea on how to use the play along feature. To learn more, check out our other videos with more tutorials on Mapping Tonal Harmony Pro 8 iOS.